This video is part of a series on the XV6 operating system kernel. In this video, I'm going to look at memory management and how the XV6 kernel manages free memory. It's pretty straightforward and simple. All memory management is in terms of 4K blocks, or we can also call them pages. So 4 kilobyte pages, and they're maintained on a free list. We have two important functions, kalloc and kfree, uh, which just uh, take things off of the free list, in the case of kalloc, or add a free block back to the free list, in the case of kfree. And that's about all there is to it, but let's go into this in a little bit more detail. Uh, first of all, uh, the, the, all this is coming from the file kalloc.c. And uh, here is the file. We've got some includes. Uh, here is our pointer to the free list. And we've got this little structure here called run, which is just a pointer to the next block. So free list is a pointer to um, a linked list of four kilobyte pages. This structure here groups the free list with a spin lock called simply lock. This is uh, used to associate the lock with the free list. Whenever we manipulate the free list, we need to grab the lock. We need to acquire or set, if you will, the lock. And then when we're done looking at the free list, we need to release that lock. We've also got a variable here. This is set by the linker when uh, the program is being built. And it's set to point to the first address after the kernel, um, the kernel's executable code, its text section, and its data section. And this is the first usable memory, uh, and we'll use that in initialization. Uh, so um, let's just look at the initialization here. We uh, initialize the lock, and then we call free range to free everything between the first available byte and the top of physical memory, which is a constant, or happens to be 128 megabytes. Okay, let's uh, look at uh, the allocation routine. Um, what it does is it acquires the spin lock here, manipulates the free list, and then releases the lock, and finally it returns the pointer. Okay, so in more detail, it grabs the first thing off the free list, if it got something, that is, if memory is not exhausted, then um, it can keep going. And what it'll do is uh, modify the free list to point to the next item. So if the free list points to this item, we grab it and then uh, redirect free list to point to the, the second, what was the second item on the list. Finally, we return, uh, after releasing the, the spin lock, we return the pointer. Before we return it, if we got something, then we set every byte in the page to this value of five, just filling it with junk. Here is the routine K free, and it's passed a pointer to a page. And what it does, well, it starts off with a little bit of error checking, make sure that this PA, physical address, is aligned on a page boundary. It makes sure that it's not too small and not too large. Okay, so it's not below the starting address and it's not above uh, the ending address. And if that's okay, then it fills the page. It starts by filling the page with junk. In this case, junk happens to be one. And the purpose of that is to hopefully bring out or, or trigger any bugs in the uh, rest of the kernel code. We don't want to use a page after we return it to the free list. So by setting every byte in it to some value, we can hopefully uh, confuse any program code that tries to use data from that page. Um, then we uh, acquire uh, we're going to use R as our pointer. Uh, we acquire the um, spin lock, we manipulate and we add it to the free list, and then we release our 
spin lock. So adding it to the free list, if, our, is, if this is our free block here, then we simply set the next pointer of it to point to the first element of the free list, and then we redirect the free list to point to this. Now let's go back and look at the initialization again. We are initializing all of memory from this starting point to the physical top, the top of physical memory, and we have a function here that will do that. Uh, it starts by it's past this starting address. It rounds it up to the nearest page boundary because it will not necessarily be page aligned and then it does a loop and what it's doing here is it's adding each page to the free list by calling k free and it's just a loop here incrementing p by 4096 bytes until um, p uh, finally exceeds the end point.